Under the umbrella of esports are a lot of genres. There are team games, solo games, and even 100 player free for all games. But if you look at competitive gaming's history, there is one genre that we can consider as the granddaddy of it all. Fighting games. Fighting games are probably the easiest esports genre to understand. It's two characters punching and kicking and probably throwing each other across the room. Just like action movies or combat sports, it's relatively easy to see what players are doing. During the golden years of the arcade, fighting games became the proving ground to show who's the boss. Alongside Street Fighter, one of the most influential fighting games is Tekken. In fact, it's been so popular that Tekken 7, its current iteration, is part of the list of metal events for the SEA Games. The magic of Tekken 7 for me is the added elements. They added the rage art, the rage drive, slow motion, which makes the game more exciting. Tekken is a game of timing, it's a game of reaction. So important na walang lag. Everything needs to be real time. It also preserved the, the elements that made Tekken successful for the past 20 years. And it's incredibly easy to understand. You have two fighters in two or three dimensional arenas. They beat each other up until one wins by emptying the opponent's life bar. In most tournament formats, one game is won when a player wins three out of five rounds. There's a plethora of characters to be played and each has their own unique style of combat. From the more realistic karate and kickboxing to the stranger ones like break dancing and ballet. I'm definitely in love with Josie Rizal, the first and only Filipina character in Tekken 7 so far. I play her in a very aggressive style because she has a lot of strings that can re easily confuse opponents. Uh, a lot of pokes that can tear down the walls of defense that my opponents can have. So she can be played to that effect. Alisa Baskanovic is my favorite character because she's the one that actually taught me how to play in a high level. Usually I button mashed, but Alisa was the one robot that was able to make me more disciplined in terms of my play style. For the longest time, I've been using Brian and Nina. Nina because she is poke heavy. Brian naman, execution heavy siya, especially now sa season 3. Sobrang he's buffed. The Philippines is Tekken country and two of its champions are a couple of young kids who have already become pillars in the community. I fell in love with the game because Tekken was the first game introduced to me by my dad. He was actually the one who taught me to play the game. When I was 10 years old, when I was in a competition, when I was the first one, Kasi nung natalo ko nun, parang doon ko natutunan na accept defeat with grace. Natalo ko kasi may kulang sa akin, so kailangan ko pang mag-practice. Ah. Tapos ayun na, nakita ko na doon na para habang nagpa-practice ako, gumagaling ako, nakakatalo na ako ng mga ibang players, at nakakanalo na ako ng mga tournaments. Those two are two different types of players. AK is more of talent. Ever since he was a kid, ever since he was 11, he has been winning tournaments. For Doji naman, Sobrang sigasig naman ng bata niya. Sobrang tiyaga. He has studied each and every player at a very high level. All the frames, all the properties, alam niya. So, AK is talent, Dojin is hard work. Sobrang magkaiba, pero the results are the same. That's what made them very successful in their careers. For every extension of Tekken, I kinda liked it because there's always something to look forward to. I became more interested with the game because the combos were good and were longer and the characters had a unique different type of attitudes and personalities. Iba siya eh, yung pagka-intense ng game. Parang onting decision mo, onting pagkakamali mo, malaki na yung mag mangyayari sa laro. Na kailangan yung decision making mo precise, accurate. Step, dapat hindi ka magkamali. And yung mga, lalo na yung mga clutch moments na ganito na lang buhay. Ang sarap sa, ang sarap sa pakiramdam eh. Kahit natalo ka, panalo ka, sobrang sarap. One can see Tekken 7 as a sort of mixed martial arts for esports. There's a lot of ways you can win against your opponent. Just like MMA, only those who train their characters to perfection understands its strengths and weaknesses and constantly develop their game plan so they can dominate the game and become king of the Iron Fist. The 
Training for Tekken 7 is very tedious. Knowing the game is one, it's only one part of it. Eh. You also have to know the enemy. In a tournament environment, it's very difficult because you're already given two matches at most para ma figure out yung kalaban. Kasi kung papaabot mo siya sa pangatlo, kailangan by then you already figured him out. And it's very difficult. That's why a coach is important then for tournaments. What's important then is the composure of the players, yung discipline pa rin nila, how they handle pressure, yung knowledge nila not just sa game, pero yung what do they know about their opponent. Tekken, as well as the entire fighting game genre, has stood the test of time. Just like the games they play, AK and Dojin will grow old and become role models for the next generation. But for now, they'll train hard to become the best Tekken players in the world. So wait and see as they get ready for the next battle.